Hello everybody and welcome! We're not on Kerbin anymore! This is Earth! Yes, I have dipped my toes in the fascinating mod collection that is Realism Overhaul. And let me tell you, regular Kerbal Space Program is a piece of cake compared to this. So what am I on about? The first obstacle, everything is huge now! About 10 times larger than in an unmodded KSP installation. This is due to the real scale solar system part of Realism Overhaul. This means your Delta V requirements increase drastically compared to the stock game. It takes about 9000 meters per second to reach lower Earth orbit, compared to about 3 to 3500 for a stable orbit around Kerbin. Transferring to Mars safely will require more than 5000 meters of Delta V, including circularization. So everything has to be bigger. In order to not explode part count, a nice little mod called Procedural Parts enables us to construct tanks in all shapes and sizes. But how large do we need to build those tanks? Well, that all boils down to what kind of engine you're going to use and the fuel that engine requires. This is where another mod, Real Fuels, comes into play. Let's take the classic Saturn V rocket. Its famous F1 engines need kerosene and liquid oxygen in order to work. For the upper stages, liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen are needed in order to power the J2 engines. All fuel types have their advantages and disadvantages, I'm not going to get into all of them, but let me just say this very, very abridged statement. If you need massive thrust, use kerosene. If you aim for efficiency, use hydrogen. So let's imagine we're planning a crewed Mars mission. I have a Mars return vehicle right here on the surface of the red planet. And yes, I used HyperEdit to get it here. Cheater! After the crew have done all their stuff they need to do on the surface, this two-stage vehicle can bring the capsule safely into an orbit around Mars. Let's look at that, shall we? I'm going to skip through a few parts because orbital burns and realism overall are like the real thing, almost a little boring once you get past the ascent phase. First stage is burned out, time to engage the second one. There we go. Alright, here we are. We can ditch the stage and then attach to our main vehicle. That will transport us back to Earth. Well, that transfer vehicle could be a problem. You would need about 12,000 meters per second of Delta V for one vehicle to get to Mars and return safely, including getting into a stable orbit around Mars and then Earth. That is a lot. Especially when you consider you have to get a payload of 35 tons there. Yep, that's the mass of my return vehicle, not including any descent system, which you are going to need. So, no matter the propulsion system, the transfer vehicle is going to be massive. And since you know me, you will already know that I prefer launching stuff in one go instead of docking parts together in orbit. So here's a little montage of me trying to build a really massive lifter. The goal? Get 1000 tons of payload into lower Earth orbit.
All right, this is the final iteration. 49 F1B engines in the first stage, 10 of those in the second stage and 16 NK33 engines in the final stage. It weighs in at 35.1 kilotons on the launch pad. The entire rocket is 155 meters tall and 31 meters wide and can probably move a small moon. This is it compared to the original Saturn V moon rocket. Look how tiny it looks compared to what I just built. Okay, let's see what happens when we try to lift off. While we're ascending, let me tell you a bit about the engines. The F-1B was a design proposed in 2013, taking the concept of the F-1 and upgrading it with modern manufacturing techniques and new materials. This would result in a 15% increase in thrust, which was intended to clock in at 8 mega newton. It would also be easier to build than the original F-1 and therefore be cheaper in production. Unfortunately, so far it has never seen the light of day, but I do hope they will build and fly it one day. In order to even be able to engage the stage, I have some solid rocket motors. You have to consider something called Eulage in Realism Overhaul. If the fuel isn't stable, and it is only stable when the rocket moves, then yeah, your fuel won't engage in the combustion chamber and it won't ignite and it's really a mess. If you want to know more about that, there are really some very good videos out there explaining this better than I could do. This third stage uses the very efficient NK33, which in contrast to the F-1B was an actual engine produced in the Soviet Union by the Kuznetsov Design Bureau. They were intended for the failed N-1 rocket aimed to get cosmonauts on the moon. Due to their unique closed cycle design, they have incredibly high specific impulse and excellent thrust to weight ratio. The modern RD-180 engines powering the Atlas V launch vehicles are derived from the NK-33. So here we are. This looks promising. We have deployed our payload. All right! So I can get 1000 tons into orbit around Earth. That is about 10 times at what the SLS is supposed to take in orbit. So take note, NASA! But it's extremely hard and I have yet to figure out how to proceed with getting my 35 tons onto Mars. Maybe I'm going to follow up on this in one of my next videos, but I'm not sure I'm capable enough to do an extensive series or something like that in realism overall. It will however stay on my computer and I'm going to revisit it again in the future. So if you're interested to see that, please subscribe to my channel if you liked what you've seen here, leave a like, share it with your friends and I hope we see each other again. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.